Hey everyone, what's going on? Joey here, and I spend hours every single month, really, going through old 1960s and 50s beach videos. And to be honest with you, I watch those videos and it just reminds me of a day where, you know, you used to have fun without phones and so on and so forth. So I figured I kind of want to do my own 1960s beach day. So let's do it. So what do you think? This is my 1960s beach day and I'm bringing you guys along. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe, you turn on notifications, and you give this video a thumbs up and a special thank you out to my patrons on patreon.com. It's because of them I get to do fun videos like this on a random Thursday in the fall. If you too want to support this channel and have your name at the end of the video, all you have to do is click the links in the description below. Anyway, let me give you a tour. <laughs> set of a bathing suit in the 60s especially towards the later end of the 60s this was like an outfit you would see on the beach everywhere you know whether you're in california or new jersey the tops and the bottoms would match and to be honest with you i like this look the main difference between swimming wear for men really since then to today is the fact that we really don't have matching shirts as much anymore though this year after i actually had this made there's companies are now doing this they're bringing this style back the other interesting thing is that the inseam is like only four inches. So I'm not really used to this, though. This was a like a common style in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and a little bit of the 80s, so this was fairly common. So it's really not out of the ordinary to be wearing something like this, though. For me, this is very, very unique. I'm not really used to shorts being this short. So this is my matching bathing suit. Now let's break down the campsite. What do you call it a campsite? With our little beach setup, we're gonna start off with the umbrella. Now, it's kind of weird. If you go back through Umbrella's history, it, I mean, it really hasn't changed too much. Though, there was a time in the 60s and 70s where the tassels at the end of your umbrella were really, really important to have. So they would have longer ones. Obviously, in today's world, they don't make them as they used to. They used to be longer, thicker. They come down to here. And they used to be really interesting colors. The colors that I was researching olive green to oranges and things like that. This was the best example I could find. Those umbrellas used to be wooden, really hard to carry. One of the videos I even gave you guys from 1967 showed them grabbing one of these and carrying these from their actual picnic table at their house and walking into the beach. It was actually very common. You would just take the umbrella from your set over there and bring it. Which is why, because we have one of the ones that have a crack on it. So you it's up and down. Oh, it looks out, it's kind of windy today. And this one tilts like the older umbrellas. Now you're probably saying to yourself, Joey, you know, did they used to have patterns in here? Yes. Some of the older umbrellas, because they used to have two different sides. One side would be the side to cover you, then inside, they'd be decorated a little bit. Not all umbrellas were like that, but some of them were, where they'd be like a different pattern inside. I couldn't find umbrellas like that, so this was the closest example we're gonna get for an umbrella. Now as we continue over, I've seen some different kinds of chairs, wooden chairs, high chairs. I like this one. I think this is a good example. This one's actually from the 70s. And you're probably saying this, that you go to estate sales and stuff? No, it's actually a lot of this stuff is just family stuff that we just kind of have like laying around the house because the house that we have, it's been in, I think, up the fourth generation. So it's been around for a while. We got a lot of stuff laying around, including this surfboard. This is a 1967 Huntington surfboard. And there's a cool wobble connection because this was actually bought at Kona in the 60s. According to my father, my great uncle Pete purchased this surfboard. I don't know how tall it is. I'm five feet, but have about a half foot in the ground. So I would say that 